Egypt, Italy, uh, Burma where it were really, and fighting Japanese. Uh, I actually saw pictures of him when they couldn't get food supplies and he really dehydrated, lost a hell of a lot of weight. Um, yeah, his best mate was a Gurkha. Um, when he got blown up uh, in, in Burma, him and his pal got blown up together and they were in opposite beds. And my dad asked the Gurkha guy if he could look at his knife, what he used to use, you know, for whatever purpose. And he said to my dad, if I draw my knife, I have to draw blood. So he goes, so anyway, my dad gave him his hand and he nicked his thumb with it just so he could see his knife. It's crazy, isn't it? I know, but yeah, then. Shout out to the Gurkhas in old shot as well near where I live. I mean, these guys are slender, but they can seriously kick ass. And they did a real service for the country, didn't they? Yeah, and lucky enough, my dad survived that war. And he lived to be a ripe old age, uh, 84. Yeah. My grandfather Fred was left on the battlefield in Tunisia fighting the Nazis mm. and uh, he was left for dead but the Americans rescued him. Yeah, that's how I came into existence, just because he survived. Thank God for America. <laughs> <laughs> so, military men then have like a certain discipline. Were you raised in a household with that discipline? Uh, yeah, I had absolutely no problems with my family. My mum and dad, they, were, they never hit me. He never did out like that. If I wanted summer, if he could afford it, he'd get it, man. When he used, he used to be a coal man, my dad, after forces. And every Friday when he got paid, he used to come home to me and my brother and buy us summer every single Friday. He'd buy us some clothes or some toys, you know. Yeah, he was a really good man. How did your mum and dad meet? Mango Club. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know my dad had been married twice, uh, and I think his first wife died. Uh, oh dear. Yeah, they'd been together years, my mum and dad. Like, I, I've, I've got a brother what's 19 years older than me. Yeah. I had a sister what were 13 years older than me. Mm. So, yeah, they'd been together quite some time. So, what was your childhood like, and how were you in school? Oh, school, I hated it. I hated school. It, like, I didn't mind going for games lessons, P and things like that. But when it comes to all that, was like maths, and oh, like that, uh, I can't be asked. And I just decided I weren't bothered, and really never went after. That. Was this back when it was CSEs and all levels and that stuff? Yeah, they were all levels. Yeah, uh, but. No GSEs at all. Like, None of that had come yeah, about yet, yeah, had it? So you found that you were more inclined to the physical then? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I used to love playing football and running. Yeah. I was really fast at running, so yeah. Um, I love football. I, like, I, I ended up with, when, when I did my second whack of ball stall, there was a scout what came to watch me from uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Really? Yeah, John Harris, and he approached, I, I think the PEI obviously told him that we got somebody from Sheffield yeah. what could play a bit, and Jack Charlton worked manager at Sheffield Wednesday at the time, and I'd only got about three weeks left, so they arranged for me to go down to Hillsborough once I got out wow. and have a trial. Yeah, and what happened there? Well, I did all right in trial, but different kinds of people to me like I would like rough and ready if you like you know what I mean and these yeah. other guys like I'd turn up with a carrier bag with my boots in and they'd be turning up like with top track suits on and big adidas bags and I didn't just felt out of place so without saying out I just walked out and John Harris he actually saw me and he told me he said uh, we are going to fight and I said, well, I don't think I've done good enough. He goes, well, if it's any consolation to you, Jack Charlton wants to see you tomorrow. Wow. And that's what he said to me. Oh, did it? I never went. Oh. I know. It was um, one of the biggest mistakes I ever did. Yeah. 
So what were your friends like as a kid? Yeah. They were all like me really. Yeah. Like we used to like go about uh, seeing what we could do. Uh, we weren't like today, you know what I mean? Like we used to go out and like we used to, used to do a lot of thieving to be truthful. Uh, Is that from the businesses, shops? When we were kids, like I did my first house burglary when I was 12 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. They send you through the window or something? Well, it, it was actually comical this when it first happened because me and my mates gone to do this house and while we're in it we heard a noise so we got hidden in the kitchen next minute this door opens and my mate's brother and his pal had come to do the same house no that's true that <laughs> they made us sit in the kitchen they went upstairs turned it over and then we all left together. Did you get a share of the spoils? Well, no, not really. Oh. Like, uh, no, we got no it. Not that I can remember. Uh, but yeah, that was the first time I'd ever done all like that. Doing things like that then, did you have a fear of getting caught? What it were, when I was a young lad, my brother, he ended up in a wheelchair. So my dad had 